Hi everybody, I'm Tanya Marie Dubé and you are with The Empowered Woman. I'm so happy to have you here today. My guest is Michelle Dallaire at michelledallaire.com. Michelle has studied holistic health and well-being for over 17 years. She is passionate about the well-being of women and girls worldwide. She's a certified master empowerment coach for women, a lifestyle meditation certified teacher, and a life coach for kids. Michelle guides women on their journey of personal transformation by teaching them how to align themselves with their inner truth, develop strong self-confidence, higher self-esteem, and mindset development to be leaders in their own lives. So welcome, Michelle. I'm so happy to have you with us today. How are you? Good. Thank you so much, Tanya, for this wonderful opportunity. Oh, I'm so happy you're here with us. As always, I want to remind everybody that Michelle has a fantastic free gift for you just for showing up for yourself today. And if you stick around to the end, she can show you how to use it and how it will benefit your life. So Michelle, I wanted to get started. Can we jump right in? Absolutely. Okay. I wanted to talk to you about how you got into this line of work specifically. Well, it all started quite a few years ago. Um, I've been all, I've always been interested in psychology and the human mind and how, how we function as humans. And I just found that I had a really a natural uh, ability to really listen well to people and people were coming to me for advice all the time. And I had uh, become an, a holistic therapist seven well, maybe now 18 years ago. And I've always really been passionate about the well-being of women. And I just always felt that we didn't need to, as women, we didn't need to struggle so much or we didn't need to go through the things that we go through uh, needlessly. So that, that was kind of like a stepping stone for me um, okay. to become a holistic health and then I became a doula after my first baby. Right. Yes. Yeah. So a doula is a woman who's experienced in childbirth and helps other women um, go through the go through the experience of childbirth in more of the emotional and physical way. And that was I was empowering women to really listen to their bodies and trust their bodies. And I didn't really realize that I was empowering women at the time, but that's what that's really what it was. And it just snowballed from there. You know, I, um, I became an, an empowerment coach and really love it. You know, I really love working with women and girls. Wow. I love that you were a doula. I had a midwife for my okay. two children. My son is six, my daughter's 12. Um, I, that whole entire experience, my experience compared to friends of mine who went the doctor route, um, they're so different, you know? I felt, mm -hmm. and I know that doula and midwife is different, but I do appreciate all the, you were basically like, well, I don't want to sum up your work, but I, to me, a doula was someone who was like a mom or an aunt or a sister who is right there with you, but who's educated <laughs> and knows what to do. And but, that's just it, you know, I, I really help uh, the couple or the woman and her partner go through sometimes what could be um, a scary experience, especially if it's their first one, or as you know, it doesn't really matter if it's your first, second, or third, they're all different. Yeah, <laughs> they're they all are. different experiences. And to have somebody there that um, helps you trust in your body and know that this is all happening and it's okay, and to work with your body. Work with is, your body, yes. It's huge, it's very huge. Wow, yes. that's, that's yeah. beautiful. I love that work. I love that you do that. I, I think I would be afraid to do midwifery or just because it's, um, I don't know. It's, I, can I tell you something personal? When for, for both of my children, I had a midwife. This is the thought that I had when I said, I don't know if I could do the work. So that they allowed me to birth my own children. Mm -hmm. So they would, you know, the head comes first and then the shoulders. And when once both children's arms were free, I was able to then take them out myself and put them up on my body, yeah. which was unbelievably beautiful, but they're very slippery. <laughs> <laughs> so I would be afraid of that part, other people's children, right? But yeah. 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 Experience. yeah. yeah um, my next question for you is what does empowerment mean to you? You've revolved your entire work, life's work around this topic. That's a really good question. What does empowerment mean to me? 
I really feel that empowerment is all about knowing who you are as a person mm -hmm. and accepting who you are as a person and really loving yourself as a person and, and honoring that. I mean, it's so important that we honor who we are mm -hmm. and we honor our gifts, our talents, and that we are not afraid to share them or use them to benefit um, the, the, the people that are in our lives or other people. I, um, I really feel that being empowered is being honest with yourself. And if you need to say no, it's okay. Knowing and trusting that you're going to be okay uh, in life. And there, there's so many things that encompass being empowered. It's, um, it's not just one thing. So it's, I like what you just said about trusting the process and knowing that yes. you're going to be okay. That's huge. That's a very confident, you know, self-assured way to show up in the world, I think, right? Because no matter what happens to you, you know you're going to be okay. Absolutely. And you know that you're, you are loved no matter, no matter what. Yeah. And I that's think true. that's also, uh, it comes into having faith and trust, like I said, in maybe a higher source or a higher power. And for me, that is is something that's very important. And it's, I think, something that guides me as well and allows me to be empowered. Mm -hmm. It's true, because then you don't feel like you're carrying the burden of life all by yourself either. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Okay, I like that. Um, what is the number one thing that your clients, both big and small, because you work with women and children, um, what is the number one thing that your clients struggle with the most? I would have to say, Tanya, it's self-limiting beliefs mm -hmm. and just the worry of what other people are going to think, especially for young girls. What are, what are people going to think of me or um, wanting to fit in? So again, it's the the lack of self-confidence and self-esteem and loving who you are as a person. And a lot of people come to me too for, uh, they don't realize it, but they're standing in their own way. <laughs> yeah, it's so, true. Yeah. yeah. It's stand yeah. in your own way when you're not really sure which way is up, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I wanted to also ask you, um, what can you tell us about getting up the courage to transform your life? That's a really big step. It is. And awareness is the first step. And if you can become aware that you do need to make a change, then you've taken the biggest step. You've taken the most courageous step. And that is to become aware of the, of the situation. You've become aware of what it is that you truly want and what you need to change and I think from there things will evolve naturally um, the way they're supposed to but I think the biggest thing yes is to become aware and um, honor that again honoring it that's yeah. really cool I really like that I find have you ever gone through anything where you had to do a major life transformation yourself well I've maybe not necessarily a major life transformation, but I have gone through things, situations in life where it has definitely pushed me to be honest with myself, to trust, to trust in the higher power and to trust that, to trust in myself that I had, that I was capable. So for example, when I was 20, I became pregnant and I was single. And so at the time I was living in a smaller community and that was quite challenging because there was a lot of judgments and um, things that were said. And I really had to trust that we were going to be okay, that my baby and I were going to be okay, regardless of what people told me, you know, that single parents can't raise kids properly. Um, I've had, I had the local priest. I did. In all honesty, I did. There's no way that I could raise my kid properly because I was single. I had the local priest ask me to leave the town. I had... Um, Are you serious? He, yes. Yes. I'm very serious. So all of this um, allowed me to really honor what I believed in. 
because I believed in, I didn't, and I know I don't want to start a controversy or anything, but I, okay, for, me, like for, for me, abortion was not an option. Okay. And that was something that I almost chose to do to save face for everybody else. Ah. And so I didn't. Mm-hmm. And I had phoned a 1-800 um, hotline, abortion hotline or something at the time in the, in the phone books way back when. <laughs> <laughs> and I must have spoken to an angel at the other end because she obviously heard in my voice that this was not a choice that I wanted to make. Mm-hmm. And she really, she empowered me. She said, you need to do what you feel is best for you, not for anybody else. And so I said, thank you. And I didn't. And, you know, we, my daughter now is 21 and she's, she's an amazing young woman. And I've grown so much and I've, I learned about faith. I learned about trust. I learned about courage. I learned about forgiveness. And I know we're going to talk about that at the end, but it was all all these really huge lessons in life that I learned and that I would never, ever change for a million dollars, $10 million. (laughs) It's true. Motherhood does catapult you into, into this unbelievable knowingness, right? So it's either Mm. going to benefit you in a really healthy way, or you're going to stumble a little bit. Like for me, it was difficult. I felt Mm -hmm. like the trauma of birth and then and then the equal trauma of, because it was a trauma for me, of now being in my house all the time, whereas before I was very independent into my career, you know, I was very um, free, I guess I want to say. Not that right. having children keeps you trapped. I don't want that idea, but it was different. It was mm-hmm. the opposite. Yeah. So for me, with all of that, I felt like, um, yeah, it was difficult. But when I look back on everything, I wouldn't be half the woman I am today if I didn't go through that set of experiences. Right. So yeah, I know what you mean when you say that. Yeah. Is she your only daughter? No, I have, no, I have two more children. I have a son who's 14 and a younger daughter who's 12. That's right. That's right. We both have a 12 year old daughter. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) I love that you're an empowerment coach and you've got these girls and the boy in your house. Do you talk about this stuff with them all the time? I do actually, I really do. And I try to teach them things about now, now I'm more into teaching them about the limiting beliefs. Um, Cause I hear them say things like, well, I, I'm not good at math or I'm not, you know, I'm not that smart. And I'm thinking, no, you know, this. And so, yes, we talk about things like that. And I try to teach them about, um, well, self-esteem for sure and making decisions that is best for them, regardless of what the group or the friends are doing. And um, that if they feel inside that it's maybe not right for them, then it's okay to choose otherwise. So that's huge because, you know, at the age that they're, they're at, they're going to be faced with more and more decisions on their own where I won't be around. But I said, like I told them actually just the other day, I said, even if I'm not physically there to help you with the decision, you can always ask me, you know, anytime if you need help making a decision. <laughs> so, yeah. Do you want to know something that you might like? That I, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> I read something probably a year ago. Some people watching might, might remember seeing this or reading about it, but it was about how this parent gave their child um, this idea for when they're out at a party or whatever. So your eldest, she may be in, she may be in this situation mm-hmm. every now and then where, or maybe she's old enough now, but um, so if your child has a cell phone, they, te- um, they text to you just an X, which means they need you to come pick them up. Like they're not comfortable with something that's happening. They don't want to be there. They don't know how to leave. And then that way, when they write the X, they can say, Oh, my parents just told me that they have to come get me. I have to go home for whatever reason. Right. Like parents. I thought that was a pretty cool way to give kids an out because peer pressure can be really hard and really difficult. I remember well. Yeah. That's actually a fantastic idea and I I will use it because I know my, my youngest daughter, she's already asked me or told me, 
I don't know what to say. You know, I, I don't know what, you know, how to say it or what to say. So that's, I think I'll use that trick. Thank um, you. Oh, for <laughs> sure. You're welcome. I know. I love it too. And I, you know, my daughter has, she doesn't have an iPhone because I don't, I don't want her to have an iPhone at her age yet. Um, but she has a flip phone. <laughs> so right. She, she can still type X. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was something else that I wanted to ask you and now I can't remember, but that's okay. We'll get back to it. So now let's get into the eight questions that I ask okay. every expert. Mm-hmm. Um, and please feel free to share anything you want to keep it simple. It's completely up to you. Um, but the first question is what inspires you? What inspires me? Hmm. I am inspired by many things because I'm a very passionate person. <laughs> I am inspired by other people's stories. I'm inspired by nature. I'm inspired by even my kids. Mm -hmm. I'm inspired by the, the people, the very most important people that surround me. Uh, I'm inspired by just, I think, watching how other people overcome or come through obstacles in life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's nice. I like that. Yeah. Um, watching people survive their stories is huge for me, right? Watching them turn their adversity into something powerful, you know, Absolutely. powerful they help themselves by helping other people even. Yeah, I like that. Um, a lot of the experts on this uh, segment of the show have talked about reaching into their adversity and pulling it, pulling it, like coming out on, of the other end of that with mm -hmm. a teaching. Like now they know that they're put on this earth to do this very one specific thing. Yeah. That, that inspires me to know it. <laughs> it really does. I love it. Uh, my next question for you is how do we live an awakened life? How do we live an awakened life? I would have to say it's all about a, it's all a journey. And so I don't, for me, I felt that I, at times I was more awakened when I was a single mother, for example, when I was in my early twenties. Mm -hmm. And then I, you know, had the other two kids and kind of, I felt like it was kind of a roller coaster. So I was going down and then I came back up and I, so I really feel that it's, uh, it's a journey. And sometimes we're going to struggle and sometimes we're going to be okay. And we're going to have uh, maybe more happy moments in life than other times. And it's embracing all of that. And I really feel again that it's about um, it's about honoring who you are and knowing that in these moments of difficulty it's okay to ask for help in these moments of difficulty or struggle it's okay to let your guard down it's okay not to it, it well it's always okay to let the perfectionism go <laughs> yeah. yeah really but I think to live an awakened life is um, it's honoring your body, so eating well, taking care of it. It's about your spiritual life, however that looks for you, whether it's praying, meditating, um, attending a church or a community. Uh, it's about, about enjoying life, doing what lights you up whether it be sports, art, anything, um, in, enjoying it, taking the time to really enjoy the simple things in life. Yeah. And, and it's about love. Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. It's about love. You're right. It is, yeah. right? I think that love really is the answer to a lot of things. Self-love. Mm -hmm. Self-love is so Absolutely. important. Yeah. Now, in your experience, what can you tell us about falling down? What can we learn when we fall down? That falling down is just an opportunity to get back up again, and, and it's, just, it's a learning experience. There is, there is nothing wrong with falling down. There is, it's not the end when you fall down. It's just an opportunity to get back up again. And... Maybe you'll discover something new while you've fallen. Yeah. And, and that's great. That's right? the best thing I think about falling down mm -hmm. is if 
finding out things about yourself that you didn't know existed to get back up. Now, in the vein of that, what I just said, what, uh, what do you think, how do you think we can find the spirit to get back up and to keep going? That I believe is all about mindset. And so hmm, having good support around us, definitely people who love us, but being, I think, willing and, and being open to receiving the help um, or taking a step back. Sometimes it's necessary when we fall and just take a step back and reevaluate maybe what's going on. Yeah. So that you can make other choices maybe or take a different direction. Once you do get up, that will be the confidence you need and the motivation you need to keep going. Mm -hmm. And then you won't be scared if you fall again because you know that you can get up and, that, and you know that you will have the confidence and the courage and the motivation to keep going. Yeah, and that you're okay. And that you're okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, I wanted to also ask you, um, what is the most difficult decision you've had to make in pursuing your destiny? Well, I quit my job, my, my security, uh, financial security. I, uh, I can honestly tell you that not quitting maybe has been the biggest thing because I don't know about you, but for me, owning my own business and especially online mm -hmm. has been a huge, huge personal development and growth process for me. Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest decision that I've had to make in all of this is not to quit, not to give up, because in all honesty, I, it has crossed my mind. <laughs> Well, yeah, because it's such an up and down roller coaster of, you know, mm -hmm. peaks and valleys and, mm -hmm. you know, ebbs and flows and mm -hmm. it's on your hard days. I think something that a lot of people don't talk about um, is, you know, our hormonal period and fluctuations affect so much of what we do and dealing with that and learning how to let our emotions stay out of our decisions. I mean, that's, we're carrying a lot. We're juggling a lot. It's important to, I can see why some days you feel like throwing in the towel. It's true. Oh, you, and you're, you're absolutely right, Tanya, because, and, and that's one thing that I learned too. And actually just um, about maybe seven, eight months ago, I realized, holy man, this is, my period is really affecting me because I, I'm very blessed. I don't have a lot of physical symptoms and, but I realized that about a week before my cycle started that I got to a really low place and I wasn't getting any work done. And so then the whole negative self talk started happening. That cycle where it was like, well, what's wrong with you? Why can't you do this? Why aren't you motivated? This isn't you. <laughs> and then I was like, Hey, wait a minute. This is part of who I am because I'm a woman. Yeah. So now what I've done is I set myself up so that in my weeks that I have more energy and creativity and all that, I, I use it. I yeah. use that energy. And then when I don't, it's okay. I yeah. give myself that time to um, actually do things that I really enjoy. So I use that time to be more creative in my artwork. And that has helped so much. I think recognizing that you're going to have one week out of the month that's not your best week. Mm -hmm heart and your effort into the rest of the month is really smart. I do the exact same thing. Yeah. I do the exact same thing. I noticed that for one week out of the month, I suck. I <laughs> not at everything, but I'm quick to temper. I'm mm -hmm. impatient. I'm sore. I have a yeah. headache, right? So I just, yeah. instead of pushing through all of that and making all of those things worse, I, I make sure that I spend my time doing the other things that I wouldn't have the time necessarily to do for the rest of the month. So a flex, yeah. a flex week, it's good for me. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And it's, it's good for me too. And that's about being empowered. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It is. It is. It is. Yeah, it's... you're right. By paying attention to that. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
and knowing that it's okay and knowing that it's smart actually not to push through it because we haven't been taught to embrace this this time we Mm -hmm. haven't been taught to honor our bodies during this time we've always been taught to push through it isn't that so i find that so unbelievably frustrating you know my daughter and i talk about this and she says well if it's so painful then why are why do you not have the time to have off like she doesn't understand why in a typical business i don't have any other job but this but i have worked in corporate Mm -hmm. before and so for typical corporate you get six in Canada, you get six, six, six days a year and you're, you're limited to those. So whether you have children or not, if you have a condition or not, it doesn't really matter because then it digs into your vacation time. Right? right. So we're talking about that. And she's like, I don't understand. It seems backwards. We can create human beings and our bodies need to go through this natural process once a month. Why would we be forced to go through all of that? It kind of makes me mad a little bit. <laughs> To be yes, yes. And that's, again, one of the beauties that we have that you and I have and so many other women right now is the opportunity to work from home to create our own businesses and help people in the world. And, and we have this gift that we can give ourselves. So we're pretty fortunate. <laughs> I know we we are really fortunate. Mm -hmm. Uh, My next question for you was what in your um, experience uh, is the human experience to you? What does it mean, the human experience? I'm a lover of life. So for me, the human experience can be a, a beautiful one. And I know that there are many people suffering on the planet. And it's not to say that I'm ignorant to the fact that there are many, many people suffering. Mm. But I do believe that we are here on earth and we come from a place of love, but I, I, unfortunately we learn fear when we're here. And I think it's to move through that fear to come back to love. That's nice. Yeah. Oh, I love that. So it's, it's really about learning how to control that fear. I see, you know how I see fear? I see fear as something that's not real. And anytime I feel fearful of something, to me, it's a signal that I have to do that thing now. I can't put it off. Don't make it wait. It's just going to sit there talking to me in the back of my Mm -hmm. mind. Mm -hmm. So I've trained myself now, (laughs) even though I don't like it and it's very uncomfortable. It's the Mm -hmm. thing that I do first, no matter what. Yeah. I just step into it. Have you read, do you know Mel Robbins? Yes. Yeah. Have you read her book, The Five Second Rule? No, but I've seen her, her TED Talks. Yeah. You've seen her TED Talks. So for anybody who's not familiar with, Re- with Mel Robbins, she has this strategy that I love to use, that I use all the time, mm-hmm. the five, four, three, two, one launch. Yep. You can't do it one, two, three, four, five. You got to count down backwards. <laughs> There's something inside of our brains that switches us on when we get to one and you just make the decision that at one, you propel yourself out of bed or you propel yourself to your computer to answer those emails or whatever it is that you have to do. You, the whole idea is that by the time you get to one, you just do it. You jump out and you just do it. And I'm telling you, this five second rule is changing everything for me. Awesome. Yeah. That's so awesome. when in doubt and having a bad day or a bad week, <laughs> you just use the five second rule. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah. Um, my next question for you is what advice would you give your younger self? Don't be afraid. Yeah. 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 Don't it's, um, it's uh, that fear is really something that, that holds us back and that we use to self-sabotage ourselves to live the, living the greatest life that we could live. Um, because our world is, is really plentiful if we, if we choose, yeah, if we choose to not live in fear. Ah, uh, that's true. You're yeah. right. You're yeah. right. Everything is available to you if you're, mm-hmm. if you're not living in fear. I love that. Yeah. Uh, my last question for you is, what is the purpose of forgiveness? I love forgiveness. And I know that it's one of the hardest, for me, it was one of the hardest things to do. But it is true that it sets you free. And forgiveness isn't about the other person it's all for you. And, you know, it's, um, I know there's some pretty horrific things that happen to people and that are traumatic in that. And 
it's not to say that what the other person has done is okay and that you're letting them off or whatever. But it's really about, it's really for you not to hold on to this negativity or this experience and because it does poison you. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It really gets into every facet of our being when we're not forgiving somebody for something. You don't have Absolutely. to forget, but when you obsess over it and it's constantly mm -hmm. causing you pain, that's no way to live, I don't think. Thank you because so much. Really, for, oh, so uh, please continue. Yeah, I was just going to say. Well, I was just going to say, because <laughs> really when you think of it, if somebody were to do something to you and you, like you said, it plays over in your mind constantly, the other person has no idea and it's not bothering him or her whatsoever. And so who is, who is it destroying? It's you, right? And so for me, forgiveness is about living a life of freedom. Yeah, coming to terms with what happened, it happened, mm -hmm. you know, there's nothing you can do about it now. And just to just accept, right? Just to be in a, in a space of acceptance, yeah. Well, and using, using the lessons that you learned from this, this circumstance or this situation and, and how can you use it to maybe help somebody else or how can you use it in a more positive way? Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. You and I have both done that in our lives, I think. Yes. <laughs> um, I was just going to say before, thank you so much for being so open about answering those questions the way that you did. You're very thoughtful and, and I love that you put some time into your thinking about it. I love that. That's really sweet. Um, I wanted to get into your free gift now. Did you want to tell everybody what your free gift is? Okay, sure. But before that, I just wanted to thank you, Tanya, for the opportunity because it's, um, it's, it, it's not often that we have the opportunity to just speak this way. So, and I, it feels good. So thank you for that. Oh, um, so my, my free gift is a wellness guide and I've incorporated my holistic therapist uh, work and my meditation and just beliefs like um, mindfulness into this guide and it's about the body the mind and the soul and so in there i've got different things that um, can help you on to becoming to living a more mindful life Ah, I love that. Yeah. Okay, good. And I will post um, the link to that uh, underneath your interview or above your interview in the email. So Perfect. thank you again thank you. for being with me today. This was really nice. It was really great to see you yes. in person, to know you. Um, and I wanted to tell everybody that um, um, Michelle and I would love to hear whatever it is that you have to say about today's interview, any thoughts you have, um, any ways in which you think you can use anything that you learned today in your everyday life. Uh, we would love to hear anything uh, that you have to say about today's interview. So please hit reply to the email that you got this in and let us know what you think. Um, so thank you again, everybody, for being here on The Empowered Woman. This is an amazing day. Um, I'm so grateful for Michelle and all of you for being here. Um, please remember that this is the place that you come to to learn how to challenge your fears, how to powerfully live the life that you want, and step into your influence. We love this. So thanks again, everybody. Take care, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.